Today, I'm talking about the Nike Turbo 2 after 100 miles. Fifteen point zero two miles, seven minutes, fifty three seconds per mile today, getting a total elevation gain of over eighteen hundred feet. Believe it or not, there are hills in Easter Iowa. I am just now discovering uh, an accidental kind of dirt road and gravel road run on this particular day. Uh, we were vacationing out in that area. My mother in law had rented a couple of cabins for us all out there, and um, I just picked a, a loop in the area on the map and it happened to be on some somewhat rocky terrain. But with today's miles, I did get over the 100 mile mark in the Nike Turbo version two. Now, before I get into my thoughts about this shoe after 100 miles, I do wanna go over some disclosures. Uh, this is a pair of shoes that I did pay for by myself. No one paid me uh, to make this video or to wear these shoes. No one sent me these shoes. This is one that I picked up personally. Uh, I'll put fuller disclosures in terms of my connection with Nike uh, in the description. Now with that out of the way, uh, I wanna talk about the Nike Turbo 2 after 100 miles. And this is a shoe that's been holding up really well for me over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I'm on a different training plan now uh, than what I would normally run. So something very new for me, I'm being coached now. And so uh, it took a little bit longer to get to 100 miles than I normally would. With most of my runs in this shoe coming in the five to six mile range at a time, uh, whether that's my easy moderate runs just at a steady state or doing a lot of speed work or tempo work uh, with this particular shoe. I did have a 10 mile run to start off with this shoe and then finished it with a 15 mile run on gravel road. So I've run a gamut, a different range of runs and terrains in this shoe. And I think that the Turbo 2 has been holding up really well and stepping up to the challenge quite amazingly. I've been very impressed with it. The Turbo 1 last year, I was super excited about and then there were some fit issues that made me not so excited about it. I've picked up other turbos uh, over the course of the last year as well. And those were all very different for whatever reason. Every time I got a pair of turbos, each one felt different. Uh, but I think that this one is the least, I guess, exciting, but probably the best of the, all the turbos that I've ever run in. And so the way that I would describe that is the Turbo One really felt turbo. It felt super snappy. Um, I felt like when I put my foot down, it bounced it right back up, kind of in a butt kick kind of way. And it felt like I could get a really fast cadence with this shoe. And But the downside to that shoe was that the upper was really hard to live with. It was super constrictive. It just felt like it was about a quarter size to almost a half size too small. I couldn't get like a good fit Long runs in the shoe were very uncomfortable by the time I got to the end, just because everything was so tight. The upper on this shoe for the Turbo 2 has been fantastic. The best thing I could say about it is that I haven't even really noticed it at all. It's a much more breathable material, it's a thin material, and it has stayed out of the way. I haven't had any of the foot tightness or the shallow toe box issues that I felt like I had in version one of the turbo. I've just been able to get in this shoe and just run a bunch of miles and it's been really pleasant. Uh, everything from slower like recovery jogs uh, when I'm in between intervals on tempo or on speed work days uh, to easy moderate runs to trying to run really hard in an interval. 
uh, in the shoe. The upper has been really great and just kept this shoe on my foot without being overly tight in any spot. Some of you have mentioned that you, it looks like I'm getting some heel slippage as I'm running, uh, but I haven't felt that at all. So if it looks that way, it's not something that I notice at all. The, the heel has a little bit of padding around the sides of the ankle, not really anything in the back of the ankle back here, but overall it just fits on my foot really well. I also do like the tongue, even though it's one of these shorter non-padded tongues. I prefer non-padded tongues because usually I don't have too much problem with pressure on the top of my foot. Um, but the shorter tongues have been kind of weird for me this year uh, in terms of what they look like. It just looks wrong, but they've been working for me. All the short tongue shoes from Nike this year have been working for me just fine. So uh, very happy with all the things that are going on in the upper. In terms of the midsole, the ZoomX has been holding up really well over the miles as well. The ZoomX is still nice and cushy and the React Foam is still giving me a nice bounce, which React Foam is like Nike's miracle foam. It's just super, uh, it's super long lasting. And so that, there's no surprise in terms of the way that the React uh, is holding up over time for me there. Uh, the big surprise for me has been in the outsole. This outsole looks like it's pretty new. Uh, there, I'm not seeing the wear that I'm normally seeing uh, at 100 miles, and it's different than the wear that I've seen in last year's Turbo as well. And so normally I get a lot of wear right in the center of the uh, pads of my feet, I don't really see any of it there. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of wear towards the toes and maybe there's a little bit, but it's really hard to tell. The other area where I normally see wear is in the outer right heel and I'm hardly seeing any of it there. I'm seeing a little bit more, a little bit further up towards the center of the foot right along this ridge. And the only reason I can tell is because there's this groove along the outer rim of the rubber. And I could tell that that groove is starting to wear down a little bit right there. But in terms of like the lugs or, or the grippy parts of the rubber on this shoe, um, everything looks really good. Uh, I wouldn't from looking at this think that this was a 100 mile shoe. So the rubber is holding up really well. Uh, something that comes up every time I post a video about turbos uh, that I still have not personally experienced is people say that like this uh, seam, either where the React foam touches the ZoomX foam or lately some people have been talking about where the, uh, the midsole entirely, or at least the ZoomX part touches the uh, upper of the shoe uh, experienced some sort of like separation. I don't see that at all. I don't know anyone that has seen it. One of you have sent me pictures of it on a brand new shoe, but uh, I have not seen anyone who's running in turbos running into that issue. If you run into that yourself, not, yeah, my really good friend ran in him and he had that problem. Not that, if you yourself have experienced it, put in the comments, cause I'd love to kind of get some feedback in terms of, does it happen? Is it a right out of the box thing? Or is this something that developed over time thing? Uh, just to get some more information out there because I can, and I'm skeptical whenever people tell me that they're having separation issues because I don't see that at all. Now for me, typically once I get a shoe to hundred miles, that's kind of end of my time with the shoe. Uh, I do an in, like a first run video when I first get the shoe and then I do the follow up full review at 100 miles to give you guys an idea. Uh, and then after that, typically because my closet is only so big, we have a small apartment here uh, and I have a lot of shoes that I want to get to, I will then donate the shoe to charity. I am not sure that I'm ready to let this one go yet. There's still a lot of weeks left in my marathon training and uh, I've been enjoying this shoe from uh, for a variety of uses, using it basically as a daily trainer. And I'm hesitant to let it go because I'm thinking later on, uh, as we get closer to the marathon, I might need a shoe that this uh, Turbo 2 can fit uh, in a certain type of role perfectly. So I'll probably still hold on to it for a little while, just in case, and we'll see how the rest of the training goes. But it's been an enjoyable shoe to run in. Very easy for me to recommend this. Uh, for people who are looking for a faster marathon training shoe or a faster day shoe 
or even just an all-arounder. You can use this as your everyday trainer. I still prefer the Pegasus. If someone's looking for a true like all-arounder type of shoe, I'm only gonna have one shoe in my rotation, which I get. I probably push it towards the Pegasus first. Um, but if you're looking for something a little bit more exciting than the Pegasus, then I think this is highly worth your consideration. Before I go, I wanna talk about a charity runner for this week. This week, it's Bryce Turner who's gonna be running the Chicago Marathon and raising money for Mercy Home for Boys and Girls, which is a place that hopes to save children from an environment of abuse, neglect, or despair. And so I was very happy to donate $70 to Bryce's fundraising efforts, and I'll post links in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?